It's basing time! I love basing, uh, I love basing, I uh, love basing, yeah. How's it going on guys and girls? Welcome back to Burn to Quiller Painting. My name's Graham and welcome to the channel. And uh, how are you doing? Hope you're all well. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I do my earth battlefield bases. They're really simple, really easy, and they're really effective. So this video came about from posting this picture on my Instagram, and loads of you were asking how I do my rocks. So I thought I'd do this little video to show you exactly how I do that specific base type. And uh, yeah, so here we go. Before we get into it, make sure you like, subscribe guys, so you don't miss any more content at Burnt and Cooler Painting. It really helps the channel and it's free. Also during the video, if you do have any questions, make sure you hit those in the comments as well. So you wanna start off with your base all done and ready to paint. As you can see, I've used fine sand for the majority of it and for the rocks, I've used medium and large stones. They're all from a company called War World Gaming. You can find them on Amazon and you can find them on their website, link down below. This video isn't sponsored by them, but I do have a, a bunch of their materials and I do really enjoy using them. So if you're interested, check them down below. I really need to get some affiliate links. So they're all on with just PVA glue and then uh, sealed with PVA glue and water. Just so you've got a super hard and durable base. Once your base is done and it's all primed, now is on to the painting. First off, I go over the whole thing in a brown. In this case, I'm using leather brown from Vallejo Game Color, but you can use any brown color that you like. I'm using this one because it's a really nice neutral tone and it has a really nice coverage. I am quite careful um, around the stones. I'm not sure why, because you can just cover the whole thing in this color we're going to be painting the stones later on so after a couple of layers of your base coat you want to wash it with a brown wash i'm using agrax earth shade straight out of the pot no fuss needed but use an old brush you don't want to be using your new or nice brushes with this because washes are so thin they'll get into your ferrule really easily and no you want to use like a shade brush from citadel or just like an old brush that you specifically use for dirty jobs with the wash you don't need to thin it i don't thin it you just get that on straight away just like the base coat, you can slap that on everywhere and uh, let that dry. Now that the base color for the earth is done, you want to now paint the rocks, the actual stones on the base. There's loads of ways of doing it. This is just one way that I do it. So if you wanna see uh, more basing videos on the channel, let me know in the comments. I'll be happy to show you different ways of painting specifically stone, earth, urban bases. So uh, yeah, hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you think. So just like the majority of the base, we want to base coat the rock areas first. I'm using a dark gray, no specific uh, color or anything like that. It's just, I've just mixed a white and a black to make a nice dark gray. Once that is dry it is on to the next phase, which is dry brushing. So with dry brushing, you don't particularly want to do it in one pass. If you do it in one pass, then you can risk getting a too heavy, too chunky look to your dry brushing, which can ruin the overall effect. Chunky paint equals bad. All my battlefield muddy bases are all dry brushed. My Space Marines, Death Guard, my Necrons, all the armies that I have are all dry brushed. It's dead quick, it's dead easy, and it looks great, especially where you want the focus to be on the miniatures and not so much the bases unless you have a massive character that you just want the whole piece to be a statement, then go wild. So with a medium or small dry brush, I just go over with a pale blue, not too heavy, not too light. You still want to see the dark gray underneath. Obviously, again, you don't want to be getting any of this on your brown, but if you do get a little bit on it, don't worry too much. The stages later on will cover that up. And if you get quite a bit on it, well, you're gonna probably have to do it again. <laughs> but that's one of the great things about dry brushing. If you do make any major mistakes and you do have to go back and do it again, it's so quick and easy that it doesn't take that much time. In this, I am using the Artist Opus Series D dry brushes, but you don't have to use these exact ones. You could either use Sistel dry brushes, Army Painter dry brushes, or just even makeup brushes. That's what I used for years before getting this set. It is all down to your preference. As I said, we want a, a good medium dry brush, not too heavy and not too light. If it is light, obviously you can just add a little bit more, but we wanna be careful it's not too heavy as a specific. 
Obviously, it's not too much of a problem if you do it too light at first because you can just keep building up that color. And that's what I would actually recommend is to do a couple of passes building up that color until you reached that kind of effect that you're looking for and you're happy with. If you're having any trouble trying to get into those nooks and crannies, you can either try a smaller dry brush. But if you don't have a smaller dry brush, go a little bit slower and be a little bit more precise and you will get into those those tighter areas without too much overspill. Next, we'll go back to the brown earth areas. This is where we're gonna be using one of my new favorite brown paints. Where is he? Where is he? No, that's not him either. No, oh, I lost him. Oh no, I haven't, he's there. Hey. Hey, how you doing? Hey, pretty baby. This is my best Barry White impression. Tell me if it's any good, probably rubbish. And this is where we're gonna go back to the earth tones and we're gonna be dry brushing one of my favorite, new favorite, browns and that is beastie brown by vallejo game color don't know what it is about it it's just a really nice warm toned brown that as soon as you start dry brushing on your bases it just makes them pop really nicely it just gives it that really nice warm like, earthy tone you don't want to get this on your rock areas you just want it on the more earthy sections but if you do get a little bit overspilled, not to worry that can help to tie in the rock sections and the dirt sections the last bit of dry brushing is to then highlight the whole base. And you might be thinking, highlight the base. And what I mean by that is a couple of different things. One, we're gonna be tying all the aspects of the base into one thing. So it looks like it is one cohesive base. And two, it just adds that little bit more pop to the bases of your minis without detracting from the minis itself. So the majority of this base is warm tones. So what I'm going to be using is a warm off-white to really tie in the whole of the base. I tried it with Terminus Stone, which is usually my go-to final dry brushing stage, but it wasn't looking great. It was looking a bit chalky, a little bit chunky. Chunky paint equals bad. And I really wasn't massively happy with it. So I switched that out for a Vallejo game color, Bone White. This came out really, really well. It tied in with the Beastie Brown really well and also the stones. You want to dry brush the whole area. And as I said earlier, it ties in the whole base, making it more uniform, even though nature's not uniform, but it just, it does its thing. It just makes the base look more believable. So the rocks don't look like they're sitting on top of the base. It makes it more like they're a part of it. And the last two things to do is to paint your base rooms in the chosen color for your army and add some nice grass tufts. And that's it, your battlefield rural base is now done. I hope you liked the video guys and girls. I hope that explains on how I do my stony or earthy bases. If you wanna see more videos like this, let me know in the comments, let me know what you think. Are you gonna try these bases at home for your army as well? If you liked the video guys, make sure you hit that like button. And if you wanna see more videos at Burning Color Painting, so make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any more of my future content. It makes YouTube know that you enjoyed the videos and it really helps the channel out. Also, if you wanna go a step further and help out making these videos, I do have a Patreon as well with two different tiers. The money from that helps me get some of the supplies, brushes, paints, things like that to make these videos possible. Links down below. I wanna say thank you to my current Patreons. You guys are awesome. Thank you very much for your support. But that's it for me and another video, guys. See you in the next one and have a good one. Peace! So in this video, we're going to be doing something. So with a medium or small. Try going slower and a little bit more precisely and you will get those. Oh, his voice just carries. <laughs>
And two, this just brings out some of the more finer details and just makes your base look a little bit more bassy. And two, it just brings out some of the finer details and just adds that little bit more, what's the word? It's completely gone. <laughs> and that's it, your battlefield urban, urban.